That's it. Straight for me. Come on. Come on. Yes. Keep coming. Come on. Oh, no. We're very close to the steepest part of Sierra Cristalina where most of the vulture nests are. So we've got to be very careful just getting down this scree as you can see. It's large chunks of uh, rock and loose stuff. It's, it's nasty. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up. We're going to just check out up these rocks because there's some nests on that side and it gives me a great view down onto a large ledge where there's several nests and also down at the bottom of this I remember by this tree from being up here a year or so ago there's an area that looks down onto some other nests slightly to the left so uh, we just got to navigate this and then set up the camera okay let's go halfway up and I just about got enough breath to hold the binoculars without without making them shake. Oh, we've got some nice shade here. There's a ton of vultures circling. They're probably all uh, all thinking I'm lunch just when I left the van and crossed the two fields on the way up. There's about 80 of them circling above me and I must admit I was looking like I was struggling across the field because it's all wet from the rain we've had so a nice thick dense clay and the vultures probably think I'm on the menu today. Whoa, look at all these. <laughs> yeah, they really think I'm for lunch these boys. Look. give you some idea of just how big these vultures are. Now, have a look at the size of that. That must be the best part of 50 centimeters maybe. Huh? That's big. When you've got a wingspan of around two and a half meters you can bet your life if they're going to be made up of feathers this big. Oh, we'll leave this here and we'll pick it up on the way down. I'll give it to my girlfriend's son. He can take it to his uh, class at school. There's so much. There's so many hanging, hanging vines and prickly thorns and God knows what in this place. It's an absolute nightmare. was a little bit too too past the nest about 50 60 meters too far down bad angle so I need to head up a little bit and try and find another high point where I can get to set up we're under the shade of this lovely wild olive tree which is a real blessing that's one of the reasons I like coming here because you've got some natural shade and uh, believe you me it's a uh, it's a really hot day I'm exhausted that was one of the worst climbs I've ever had 
This little domestic on the doorstep is not between adult male and female, but the chick from the last breeding season who still thinks it can drop by any time it wants for a free slice of carrier. The adults, of course, have other ideas on their minds. One of them is mating for this breeding season. Chick not welcome. I have a sneaking suspicion they could be about to mate again. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Just standing around on the back is foreplay, then he's doing a lot of foreplay. I can't believe this poor chick has not been fed. They've mated five times today, and this poor chick is starving. So, the female is the one with the lighter plumage. Now we know. This poor chick is running out of things to do in order to uh, get its mother to feed it. Just when I thought they were about to feed the chick a couple of minutes ago, they mate it again. Oh, looks like the chick's being reprimanded, you naughty boy. It's now 6.30 in the afternoon. I'm somewhat burnt to put it mildly. I'm under camouflage but it's coming through and uh, it's extremely uncomfortable I must admit. The vultures have been mating uh, like clockwork. It's almost every hour they mate but this poor chick still hasn't had any food. Today's menu is strong German bread, avocados off my own tree and something vegan. Let's just call it that. I really feel for this poor little chick today. I've been filming it since just after sunrise when I climbed up this morning because I knew it was going to be an extremely hot day. The temperature is over 40 degrees and this poor little thing has been in direct sunlight since 11 a.m. It's now just after 7 and the sun won't hit the horizon until half past nine. So it's still got a while to go. The adults have been back, but they haven't regurgitated any food, which is where it will get its only moisture for four months from the day it hatched to the day it fledges. It's the only way for it to get its moisture up here on this rock face. So my heart goes out to it. I've got a bottle of Volvic mineral water and I feel guilty every time I take a swig. I know it's nature, but uh, can't help it. It'll be fine. Are we finally about to see this poor chick get fed? After several hours of waiting and six, six or seven times the adults have mated, they're finally paying some attention to the chick. Finally, but it still doesn't look like there's any offer of food. be so hungry and I think that is the male is it the darker one yes it is the male so hopefully he's going to regurgitate some food very soon because the crop is much bigger on the male's neck considerably bigger than the female so he must yes here we go finally
please hurry up and regurgitate this before my compact flashcard runs out. The battery's still half full, but I have a very funny feeling my compact flashcard is going to run out. Come on, come on, that's it. Come on, come on. Come on, that's not enough, she's dying. There's one happy filmmaker as well. It's worth the wait. Here comes mum as well. Hopefully mum's hungry. 